coming up on Our Grace Family. I was walking up the back stairs of Grace Cathedral, and the one thing that struck me is I, wa I started walking so slow, and I was so in awe, and it felt so holy. That is what really struck me. I, I felt like I was in the presence of God. It was so holy, and it was so overwhelming with love. And I knew I was home. All of that and more on today's show. Welcome to Our Grace Family. Thank you for joining us. I'm Reverend Steve Millar, a minister here at Grace Cathedral. And this is my lovely wife, Kathy. On today's program, we have a longtime member from Grace Cathedral joining us today. Welcome to the program, Melissa. We're so happy to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. And 35 years yes. with Our Grace Family. That's wonderful. Yes, 35 years now, this year. I know you didn't start out living in Ohio, so we want to get a little background history of your life. Where did you start off? Sure. With um, your relationship with the Lord. Okay. Um, what comes to my mind is prophecy in the past that God would bring us from the east, the west, the north, and the south. And when I look at my life, that means so much because of where I did start off. Um, I actually grew up in eastern New Mexico, a um, real small town. We, we lived in a godly home. We went to church. I had a grandfather. Uh, he is the foundation for what really brought me to the Lord. He got saved in the 30s. He got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. He had the real Holy Ghost baptism. He was the real deal. <laughs> and he raised his children right. He kept them in line. And as his grandchildren came along, he was the foundation of our family. And he was the godly foundation of our family. He kept his children, his grandchildren in line. Mm -hmm. We learned from a very early on age, we went to a Pentecostal church. We knew all about heaven and hell from day one. Um, my parents, they dedicated all his children to the Lord. I think I was six weeks old when they brought me in and they dedicated me to the Lord for the Lord's work. So is and it fair to say that you can't recall a time when you didn't know about Jesus? Correct. I never knew a time that I didn't hear about Jesus. That's I was uh, the first time I was in church. I obviously was in my mother's womb, but then they brought me in at six weeks of age and we were in church every time the doors were open. We were taught um, to fear hell <laughs> and we were taught you wanted to go to heaven. We were taught living free from sin and we were taught about the rapture. We understood the rapture. We understood the tribulation period. There was no doubt. We believed in the Holy Ghost baptism. There was never a time in my life that I did not have that foundation. And as a young child, I think I was 11, and in that church in Eastern New Mexico, um, someone came through and they were talking about the rapture. Well, I had always heard about the rapture, but this night it really just resonated with me. And I was old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. And I knew at age 11 that I needed to really give my heart to the Lord, even though I had been raised in this church. I gave my heart to the Lord that night and I received the Holy Ghost baptism. And I remember that night so well, like it was yesterday. And I, I can still see myself at the altar and this little elderly lady that loved me so dearly, she was on the other <laughs> side, praying me through to the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost. And it was real. And I knew it was because it wasn't me and it was so holy and it was so humbling. And I remember later that night just sitting there in awe <laughs> and I knew it was the real Holy Ghost. And at the age of 14, we had moved from Eastern New Mexico up to Washington state. And it was in the Seattle area, not too far, about 40 miles from there. And again, we continued on in a Pentecostal church and knowing right from wrong, we knew better. We never went out in the world. We never did drugs. We never smoked. We never drank. We didn't do anything like that. We got involved in church. We were involved in the youth activities. And, um, but as time went on, uh, up there, there was, it was a lot more, um, contemporary. 
And little did I know that in my teen years, I actually became a lukewarm Christian and didn't really have the power of God in my life anymore, but I was so used to living that motion because I had been raising it, raising it my whole life. And I didn't Were understand. Were you doing your prayer time? And No. Okay. See, at that time, I wasn't really taught. Yeah, there'd be sporadic times reading the Bible, going to church, but it became more of just a lifestyle, a not a relationship okay. with Jesus. And I didn't really realize that at the time, but obviously there was an honest heartedness in me that God saw. But like I said, it just, we just went into the motions and I thought I still, you know, had the Holy Ghost baptism. You couldn't have told me that I didn't, you know, I thought I did. And as time went on, I graduated from high school, got a job and I had my life planned out. I knew where I was going to work. I knew where I wanted to live. I knew the kind of lifestyle that I wanted to live, but I was living for God. You know, I wasn't smoking so you and thought, drinking. Right. So I thought, right. But, you know, I thought that I was okay. And in 1987, uh, I was at a friend's house and they had the TV on and they had grown up at Grace Cathedral. In Ohio. In Ohio. <laughs> and they were out there in Washington State at the time. They were watching Reverend Angeli on TV. And I remember looking over at the TV and I was like, oh, who's that? Never heard of Reverend Angeli before, never seen him before in my life. And I was like, oh, okay, there's a preacher there. And I was kind of drawn to him. It was a station coming out of Vancouver, British Columbia at the time. So then over the next few months, I would pick up a Holy Ghost magazine that they had. So your friend lets you know that he... He yes. or she went to this church. Correct, that they had grown up at Grace Cathedral. And so I was starting to see like the Holy Ghost magazines laying around, the giant little books didn't really know what they were. I picked up a Holy Ghost magazine and I was so drawn to the testimonies. When I read the testimonies, I, I was like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> I never didn't believe in miracles, um, but it was just, there was just something different. I was just so You weren't drawn. seeing them at the church that you were attending. No, we weren't seeing, you know, miracles. It's not that we didn't believe in them, but we weren't seeing them mm -hmm. like I was reading them in this magazine. Right. And, and it for just really those who may not know what heart. the Holy Ghost magazine is, it's it's our publication. Right. It has a sermon message in it and also testimonies of people who have received miracles through this Jesus ministry. Right. And I was I still didn't really know who Reverend Angeli was. Obviously, I was beginning to see his name a little bit more on magazines and books. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had always heard, I always knew about the rapture from as long as I can remember. But I picked up his book, Raptured, and I read Raptured, and it was like reality. reality. <laughs> <laughs> I knew about the rapture. I knew what happens if you get left behind and about the tribulation period. But this was like... It was like you were living it, it through the It was book. like I was living mm -hmm. through it, and it just really touched my heart. And, you know, God was really kind of dealing with me. And um, there was one afternoon, I was just... You know, I was just standing there and it was as if an audible voice spoke to me. It wasn't audible, but it was so real. I remember the words verbatim and God just spoke to my mind and he said, Ohio will be your home. <laughs> I didn't understand too much, you know, at the time. Mm -hmm. And then I, I thought, OK, Ohio will be your home. Did you even think later, that it was? The Grace no. Cathedral? No. No, you're just thinking Ohio. No, because I, I was just hearing about it. I didn't even really know that much. I didn't know, you know, how well known Reverend Angeli was. I didn't really know him. I'd never met him. And then it happened a second time, just a few minutes later, Ohio will be your home. <laughs> and I remember being kind of shocked. I'm like, okay. You, you, know? knew, you knew it wasn't your own thought. <laughs> right. I knew it wasn't my own thought. And it was so real. Mm -hmm. And I never, I could not get away from that. I couldn't get away from it. Well, then about a little over a year later, um, through this friend, I was able to move to Ohio and become a part of this Jesus ministry. And that was in July of 1988. And I started attending the services here. What was your first service like? Oh, the first service, it was, it was, 
amazing to me. I walked, I remember walking through, it was the old church in, on Canton Road, and I'd never seen the inside of the church. I had seen little bits of it, you know, on TV and in the magazines and stuff, but I don't really know too much, but I knew this was where I was supposed to be. I knew it, even though I didn't fully understand, I was following that leading because I, I knew what God had put in my heart. And I was walking up the back stairs of Grace Cathedral. And the one thing that struck me is I, wa I started walking so slow and I was so in awe and it felt so holy. That is what really struck me. I, I felt like I was in the presence of God. Had I you never ever felt didn't that way before? God. Never. Not like that. Mm -hmm. Never. I mean, when I received salvation and the baptism, that was probably the closest that I ever felt that holiness, that sacred holiness. But when I walked up those stairs, I felt like I was in the presence of God and I was just, I didn't want anyone to talk. <laughs> I didn't want to breathe. It was so holy and it was so overwhelming with love. And I knew I was home mm -hmm. and there wasn't a soul on the face of the earth that could have convinced me otherwise. And to this day, they still, they can't convince me. Yes. I know that that was where God you, brought me. You are home. Yes. Home at Grace Cathedral. Yes. And we want to hear how your life has progressed since you came home. Yes. <laughs> but since we have I to came. take a quick break. And friends, stay with us because we have so much more to come. We'll be right back. Our Grace family is supported by viewers like you. Your donation is greatly appreciated. Your financial gift ensures that this faith building program can continue to be a blessing to you and your family and to many others just like you. Acts 4.12 reads, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And we're back with Melissa, and she just shared with us how she traveled all the way from Seattle to come to Grace Cathedral. And now, Melissa, can you tell us what happened next? You're at Grace Cathedral, you're attending the services, right. and what happened next? Well, I started attending the services right away because that is the reason I came because I knew that this was the place I was going to be <laughs> calling home. And it only took a couple of weeks for me to really start to realize that I really wasn't saved and I, and I no longer had the Holy Ghost baptism. Um, and so on a Friday night, Reverend Angel used to have the Holy Ghost rallies. He would line everybody up and he'd go down and be, he'd be praying for each one of them. And I was sincere. I mean, I was honest hearted and I realized that I have had not been fulfilled for many years mm -hmm. and I didn't understand why. But when I saw Grace Cathedral for just a couple of weeks and I saw people getting miracles and I saw the Holy Ghost in action, I knew it was real. It was like the Bible was alive. <laughs> alive, actually alive. And it was amazing to me. I really felt like I was in a movie and I, but it was real. And Reverend Angel was praying for people. And as he was coming down the aisle, you know, my hands were up and I was sincere. And we, we have a song in church that's called, you know, the sound of miracles. And this is the only way that I can describe it is, you know, salvation is the greatest miracle. And as he was coming closer and closer to me, I could audibly hear what sound like rushing wind. <laughs> and it really did. It was just like this roar and it was just coming towards me as Reverend Angel got closer and closer. And as he put his hand up to the person next to me, I knew he was right next to me. And as he, his, he came over towards me and he reached his hand towards me, I saw the light of salvation. And he's mentioned it so many times. It's brighter than any camera light you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And it was. I just saw that light of salvation just come towards me with that sound. And I was so shocked. <laughs> and I was so full of joy. I remember just kind of stepping back and I opened my eyes and I had the biggest smile and I was I was laughing, but it was a joyful laughter. And I looked at Reverend Angel, and of course he was smiling really big and <laughs> laughing right along with me, but it was just that joy. And I felt such 
peace and such love and there was like no care in the world. It was just brand new. I felt as light as a feather. And um, it was a couple weeks later, I think I went down to the altar and I received the Holy Ghost baptism. And I knew it was real. I knew it was real. And God took me back to a child, my childhood, when I had that same experience. Mm -hmm. And I felt that same humility and just being in the presence of God. And it, it was reality. And I knew, I knew it was real. And it was just the, the journey for me being a part of this ministry. And I could, I could never imagine anything else. And I realized when God was bringing me into all this, I realized how unfulfilled I had become mm -hmm. in my teenage years. And I didn't, I didn't know why. I didn't understand why. Um, but just falling into that life of lukewarmness right. and denying the power of God and just going through the motions. And that's what I think is yes. amazing about your story is how you didn't even realize you were in that lukewarm condition right. until you found the reality of true salvation and, and the Holy Ghost baptism when you moved here to Ohio. And right. I think that's what a lot of people, that happens to a lot of mm -hmm. people where they're just, yeah. they go into lukewarm. That's what lukewarmness is. You don't even, you know, you're just complacent, you know, you're mm -hmm. just kind of just there. And, going through and, the mm -hmm. motions. Yeah, you're just going through the motions and you're, yeah. and you, you know, you, you believe, but you're really not all in. There's no real reality. Yeah, of, you're not, you're not right. doing your prayer time. You're just, Correct. you're existing. Existing, but you think you're right. And that's the danger of deceit Yes, because you don't see it mm -hmm. because the devil doesn't want you to see it. You do become very complacent and you can become self-righteous too. Yes. And I'm sure at some point there was self-righteousness there too, because you couldn't have told me that I wasn't saved, but God was dealing with me. And then he put that path before me. And years later, and this, I wanted to go into this too. Um, years later, I came across a prophecy. Um, I was looking through a stack of prophecies and I realized the date and I was like, oh, this is the date. Can you explain that real quick to our audience what a prophecy is? Right. Through the gift of prophecy, Reverend Angeli would bring forth a message from the Lord for the people. Um, and someone would always take down those prophecies and it's, it was from the Lord. It was the Lord speaking to us through the prophecy. And I pulled out this prophecy from July 22nd, 1988. And that is the very day that I came into this <laughs> ministry, the very day. So when I read this, I was stunned, <laughs> but it was beautiful. And it means the world to me. And I know the prophecies are for everybody, but this was special to me, this one part. And it says, I have led you by a mighty hand. I have watched over you day and night. I changed your paths that you walked and put your feet on the one path that brought you here for this hour. And that's my entire life <laughs> in a nutshell. The one part where he says, I watched over you day and night. You know, my parents dedicated me to the Lord at six weeks of age for the Lord's work. And no doubt God watched over me day and night. I know he protected me. All along the way, I felt different. I did feel a difference in my life. I always knew that God's hand was upon me. I always felt that protection and that love, even though you kind of get away from it at times. And then where he talked about the paths, I changed your paths that you walked. <laughs> I had graduated high school, gone to college. I had my life planned out. I knew where I was going to go to school. I had everything planned out. And it never came through. It fell through every time. And now I realize that it's because God was placing yes. me on that one path yes. that brought me here for this hour. And what I think is he is, you know, yielding to what God wants you to do. Yes. And, and God gave you the direction, but it's yes. up to you to still, you know, move forward. You can, you know, just let it go. You can do your own thing, you, you know, but God lets you know that right. you were supposed to be in Ohio. Yes. And you, and you didn't know why. Right. I didn't, but you know, I just, I knew it was real and I, I knew it in my heart and just listening to that still small voice and being willing to yield to let God talk to you and direct you. And, you know, if you don't, if I didn't, I would have been, I would have missed out on God's mm -hmm. divine will for my life. Yes. And you know, you've been a part of this great work for 35 years. Yes. And yeah. now you're the director of our Growing in Grace mission program. And can you share a little bit about that yes. with our audience, what that's all about? Yes. Um, it is an honor. It is the honor of a lifetime. You know, growing up in church, um, I saw missions and it was always special. So to think that I am such a big part of, 
you know, the Growing in Grace Mission program is beyond my imagination. It's, it's humbling, to say the least, to see what you can do to win souls. There are so many souls out there. They are hungering, just like I was. They may, they may be unfulfilled. They may be unhappy. They may not have the truth. They may have never even heard of Jesus. I was growing up knowing Jesus from day one. So it is such an honor to be a part of being able to get a Bible into somebody's hands in another country who's never heard of Jesus. And just a small part of it. I mean, this, the Growing in Grace Mission Program is a huge part of this ministry. It's everyone here, their heart is in it. Yes. We're here for souls. Mm -hmm. God brought us all here for souls, no matter where we came from, to go out and win more souls right? while we still have time. And there are so many souls out there for us to reach. And through this program, you can see them day, day and night, day and night, day and night. They're crying out for something. They're so unfulfilled. They're reaching for something. And just like that one friend of mine who had that program on TV and I just turned and looked and that started my journey, mm -hmm. getting a magazine into someone's hands in another country, a blessed cloth in the preacher's hands and they can go out and touch souls and it brings them into the light of salvation and into the Holy Ghost baptism and to heaven one day and we'll see them all in heaven one day, but we have so many more to win. What's yes. great about this program is yeah. you're connecting with ministers in different countries mm -hmm. Yes, and they're going out to the villages, the prisons, the hospitals. They and are. And they are touching those souls. They're that sacrificing don't know the truth. everything. And, and you get to communicate with them. Every day. Yeah, each day, one-on-one, <laughs> yes. -on -one and, yes. and encourage them, be a blessing to them, and help them. Yes. Do you know offhand how many uh, ministers we're reaching out to right now? I know I'm kind of putting you on oh, the spot here. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Just a rough number. Um, in, in one way or another, it's probably over 100. Yeah, that's in one, one way or another, depending on the country and what kind of communication you can have with them, you know, depending on what they have available to them. But it's the work of the Holy Ghost yes. and he's he's leading the way. And you think mm -hmm. about that time where you were reading that magazine and how that inspired you. Yes. To reach out for more. Right. One piece of literature. Think how it can affect those souls in these yeah. different countries. Right. But we have to take another quick break here. So friends, stay with us. We have more to come. We'll be right back. Desiree from Stowe, Ohio shares this testimony. I went into the healing line for prayer and God revealed to Reverend Angley that I had arthritis in my toe. Then he prayed for me and I was slain in the spirit. When I walked off the stage that night, I had no pain in my toe. I had received my miracle. Your songs come in different ways. It doesn't mm -hmm. usually come the same way all the time. When you get a hook, mm -hmm. then you just start writing about your experience. How did you go about getting saved? Well, that's a good question. When I was 10 years old, I got my first guitar. I also got saved back then. But during my junior high school years, those were my worst years. My problem was this right here. I had a foul mouth. Oh, I needed you. I didn't have an appetite. For the word of God that night. I didn't really have a desire or an appetite to talk to the Lord. It was awful. I'd go to church and act like a saint, and then I'd go to school and just act terrible. Back when I was 10, I didn't want my peers to think that I was small. The preacher gave an altar call, but I didn't want to look so small. The line, I didn't want to look so small. I didn't want to walk down in front of the, my peers and look like an idiot. Yeah, I didn't want to look small to them. I still wanted to be act big. One day, I was walking down the hallway just cussing like crazy. I was with my buddies. Some girl was walking by and she stopped and looked at me and says, you cussing like that and you sang in a church choir? 
oh my goodness, it was like somebody stuck a knife right in my heart. That really, I knew I had to make a change. And that's when I finally went down to the altar and I really got saved. I finally reached out with a heart full of sin. The Holy Spirit was moving on me, so I just decided, you know what? I just, I got to get saved. My mom was with me. She took me down to the altar. Reverend Angeli came over. My mom says he needs to get saved. And so he had me raise my hand and I went through the sinner's prayer, got saved. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna write a song about this. I got saved, I got Jesus in my heart. I got old time religion, oh, the love he did impart. I got saved, I got really born again, set free by Jesus' blood. When I got saved, I wanted to just hug everybody, so I tried to portray that in the music. It was just, it was miraculous. I got saved, I got really born again, set free by Jesus' blood. It's not about how many songs you write, how many instruments you play. It's all about if your songs will touch people. That's the main reason I even write songs and play. I want to touch people. I got saved, praise God. I got saved. Welcome back, and we want to thank you, Melissa, for being on the show today and for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Yes, and I just love your testimony. Friend, we'd like to give you this opportunity right now to receive Jesus Christ in your heart. Maybe the Lord's been dealing with you, and you realize that you need to have Him in your heart. Well, at this time, pray with me and say, Oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins but I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Now come and be with us in the service this morning. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. We would love to hear from you. If you were encouraged or blessed by today's program, let us know. You can email us at ogf at thegracecathedral.org or write to us. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Ernest Angeli Ministries.